it looks great. Dan, your hair looks great. We're live Thanks. here, of course, with Dan John, legendary strength coach, to take I've whatever been... fitness questions you send our way, which is always a good and fun and it's... proper time. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, the reason I mentioned my hair is that somebody on my on my podcast over there on the YouTubes asked me if I dye my hair. Do <laughs> you dye uh, it? <laughs> well, you know, some other guy on, on here asked me, I, folks, uh, there's two things. First off, I, I don't do really, <laughs> trust me, I don't do a lot of, uh, outside of the lifting and training and taking care of things, I don't do very much at all. But what, I guess there's an issue that I, I, I found more uh, interesting here, uh, young Patrick, is why why do people think they have like like would you do that in polite society to somebody you don't know? Oh man, of course not. I hope not. If I do, somebody needs just somebody just needs to slap me. Yeah, oh, my I, wife would do that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Pavel saying one time I was talking about these guys who say stuff online, and, and he knew uh, one of the people. And he goes, "Dan, it's the internet. It it doesn't matter." And the funny thing is, I I even then I thought to myself, you know, I think it does. Because once you start saying things anonymously or online or in one of those echo, echo chamber places where everybody agrees with you, pretty soon your your thoughts, I mean, thoughts turn into actions. Then it becomes your character. You're right, Dan. How you behave online absolutely matters to the type of person that you become. How could it not? Of course it does. And, you know, it, these are, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I wonder about, I wonder about parents today. <laughs> no, I do. I kind of wonder, like. I know if Eileen, my mom, found out that I'd done something like that, she, she give you the old belt, the old fashioned oh, belt. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. A, I mean... <laughs> yeah. I remember one time someone saying to me, I, I yelled at a kid, and it was inappropriate. And it was not long after we had that actor shooter on campus, and I thought to myself, so me yelling at a kid for this behavior is wrong, uh, compared to the fact that we had an active shooter on campus, you know, a couple of weeks back. I just okay. <laughs> I'm Top not, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, yeah, I'm not going to go any further down here, but me getting the belt from my old grandfather was some of the best lessons I ever had, straight up. <laughs> hey, one thing, man, if Eileen looked at you, you, you got quiet. Uh, yeah, God bless Right, him. yeah, 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 that's right. God bless him, God rest him. My grandfather was a great man. You know, he was stern with his discipline, but always fair. That was the key. Always really, like, I definitely deserved a lot more than that belt when I was a kid. Man, but yeah. it was... How's your ABC video going? Uh, good. Yeah. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the mention. So if people aren't familiar, I have this new uh, this new channel called Kettlebell Quickies. You can look it up, and it's all about just providing y'all with those time efficient workouts. And had a video uh, just last week or two weeks ago of demonstrating Dan John's famous armor building complex. He was kind enough to share that out. So appreciate the uh, appreciate the mention there, Dan. Yeah. Really yep. Well, I'm gonna have a little YouTube video uh, called uh, Dan John Quickies, but I, I think we're gonna have to have a content monitor on it. <laughs> I think we might, right? Not made for kids. You got to push that button out on all the YouTube videos. Hey, kids. <laughs> Dan, uh, uh, before, we, before we do questions and people uh, send in whatever you have, Dan, how's your training been going this week and what else is new on that front? Still, uh, things are good. Uh, uh, big news. We took second last night in trivia, which is – which, and I, and I actually feel bad because I forgot that the, uh, the bombing was over Lockerbie. I could not remember this, the airplane that got blown up over Lockerbie, and I couldn't remember it. And honestly, I woke up this morning, and it was kind of interesting because I'm like, there's been so many tragedies that I, I, I'm i starting to can't remember. Mix the them week. up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of weird. But uh, training is going really well. My, uh, uh, you know, I'm just staying. The nice thing is, is once you get into the rhythm of training, especially this time of year, the weather's gotten better here in the beautiful uh, Murray. And uh, like even yesterday, uh, I went outside to work and I just, you know, I, I did extra yard work yesterday. I kind of sat in the sun reading and I'm like, now it always, I've always thought that if done correctly, the best time of the year to lose fat would be winter. Because if you tend to eat the traditional winter foods, the soups and stews, and you're shivering constantly and you have the, you know, the shovels, you know. I always thought that would be the best time to to lose body fat. Like if you follow me on paper, yes. but in reality, I think this is the time of year to really get glorious and get outside and, and enjoy life. So yeah, training is going well. Um, nothing huge. I'm still doing the high high rep presses, and I'm doing the uh, the a lot of volume presses, 
and the ABCs. Uh, after we talk here, I'll do a couple rounds of glutes and then, uh, I, I today's my heavy wrecking day. So, uh, uh, well, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. And, uh, before we move forward in, I have a friend that has a son who is a wrestler right now. And, uh, I wanted to make sure I threw this, this, uh, this question to you. What is your, for, for let's just say high school athlete. We, we were talking about fitness standards last week. Where are you at on, um, not just all the big lifts, but the deadlift specifically for your high school athlete. Is there a range? Is there a floor? Is there a ceiling for the deadlift? I think a varsity athlete probably should be able to deadlift 315, uh, three big meat side. Yeah. Um, The the issue with the deadlift is that, well, you know, done correctly, 315 is a great, great number. Certainly, you know, you're going to have. And that's good. That's just like a fixed number. We're not worried about percentage of body weight. Just put, put on the wheels, lift it. You know, go yeah, into your uh, program uh, right good. Say, well, you know, if the kid weighs 150, it's double body weight. Yeah, true. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. Well, that was kind of weird. <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me, gentle listeners. Um, but I've had uh, I've had a high school boy deadlift 600. Uh, probably two or three others could have done it, but I started to move away from those heavy max deadlifts. You know. Uh, uh, in my career, no, no, nothing wrong with it, folks. It's just that when you pull 600, you you, you lose your athletic ability for a couple of days because yeah, you're man, yeah, the stress, right? Your, mm-hmm. your, your 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 nervous system is tapped out, and really in high school, you barely have two weeks between seasons to reorient your athletes. Yeah, really, if, really, yeah. really important point. You know, maybe we should explore that a little bit more, but like. Even me, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not training to be a high level athlete, but I'll tell you what, I've had to learn to time my training sessions around just other things that are going on in my life. Because I'll give you an example. I have a I have a gig coming up Saturday where I gotta play guitar. I will not train Friday because I know that not only will my hands and grip be very tired, but man, it just yeah, the fatigue just affects everything. So, like, I've learned the hard way. Like, okay, it's not just athletic endeavors. Like, if I need to just be on point for anything, like, I better not do my heavy training session the the, the immediate day before. Just back, something for people to keep in mind, right? You know, uh, back when I was young, I think the group is called Fall Back Boy. Is that right? Does that sound right? Uh, is this a is this a musical band? Is it uh, yeah. Fall Down Boy? The Fall. Fall boy. It's just fall. Is a fall boy. I know who you're talking fall about. Out, fall down. Fall yeah. out boy. <laughs> That's it. You're going to have all the kids, gonna, all the kids in their marijuana, Dan, are going to be shaking their head at us. <laughs> so the, the drummer came over to train with me and uh, the level of focus he had on his health, because he said, you know, you got a three hour gig as a drummer. It's, it's, you are on. You, there is not, you know, it is a, you know, uh, if he, if they do a one hour set, that is 60 minutes of high intensity, high level focus. And so, yeah, uh, I know this, I know that heavy lifting affects my ability to type, uh, of course, but it makes sense. I mean, the neurological, you know, um, there's no, I mean, yeah, I mean, think of it this way. Like you do a bunch of bench press and you go to shoot a basketball. Everyone's felt that before. Yeah. But you don't, but you don't think about, well, how does all that grip and the pulling and, and, the, and the pressing like, and then I got to go play all this finely tuned stuff on the guitar the next day. It has a huge effect. <laughs> it has a huge effect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we used to do those push-up contests and we would do a thing like just some accuracy where you needed accuracy and it was just a disaster. It, it's interesting. Yesterday, my uh, my great my great the, she's a great young thrower. I'm working with. She uh, she had probably the best throw of her career. But what's cool about it is you could it landed and if it was a straight line right for where her right hand was. And I said that you know you know when everything just suddenly gets together is when you're also extremely accurate on what you do. You know, I mean, I've seen people pass the snatch test, and you're like. Jeez, this is this is a, a you know call nine one one uh call you know call 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 surgeons call a priest you know uh you know you <laughs> just and it's just that whole you know that whole style you know they they're here in their heads and then the person next to them who's really hyper trained the test and you hear the pop, 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 and every single time the bell hits the same spot yep if you're exhausted 
well, you know, you know what I'm saying? You lose accuracy. That was interesting you said that because accuracy is a big part. You can have the best throwing arm in the world as a yeah. baseball player, but if you throw the ball really hard and it ends up in the stands, Bull Durham, uh, it, you know, you, you, you don't have a job. Uh, good. Sorry. Nice little segue. There. No, it's good. And there's also something there, you know, something of a little test for people. Like if you have something important coming up, and you're not where you really have to be on point and focused and energetic and accurate and, and precise. Uh, and if you're not worried about, you know, your training getting away of that, then maybe you're not training hard enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, like, 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 like serious lifting, like is something you should be a little concerned about with how it's going to affect other areas of your life. If you're really trying to perform well. And that's kind of the big, that's the big kid job. Uh, you know, uh, my athletes are all off a of spring break and we had one of the best training sessions we've ever had yesterday. And uh, some of them went home, California, uh, Oregon, uh, Florida, and they came back after five days, six days of mom cooking and sleeping in all day and quiet, you know, no, not dorm life. And it wasn't the training, it was the not training that did it so it's I, I this is my favorite part of coaching is the those rhythms and the dances of that's right you know, yeah. so, all right much, well, much of an art is it is a science let's do some questions there's a lot ah. of good stuff here jason says hey pat and dan after every program i take a week off but by day three i begin to crave the weights again and it looks like all my progress is gone he says this is all in my head yeah what do you, what do you guys do during the off time what is your counsel here for dear jason Dan? well so for me, I like, so I like off, off. So for me, I like to be someplace else. Um, you know, when I go, when I teach over at St. Mary's, I mean, I, when, if I'm competing in our weightlifting meet at St. Mary's, I'll have two extremely light sessions and then compete in a two week period. And if, if I'm not lifting, I'll have a two week period where I don't lift at all. I walk more. For me, uh, I try to have a little bit more. I, I during my uh, workout time, I try to do something. I try to do something uh, else. Yeah. I, when I go to Vermont, I still train, but I train different than how I train here. For me, that's the key. Uh, if I'm taking a deload, an off week, folks, I don't know about y'all, but uh, I struggle with deloads. Uh, off is easier for me than light. Uh, and low rep mentally. So mm -hmm. I understand the issue here. There is an exercise addiction of some kind. Um, I'm not sure it's physiological. Uh, you know, I don't think you sit around and, you know, some guy walks by and drives by in his car real slow. Hey, you want to do some kettlebell swings? You know, no, 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 just say no. You tweaking, you tweaking, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, the, the psychological side, and I think, and I think the question hit right on it. Is that you just start to oh all my gains are gone my left arm's clearly smaller my uh, you know my in the funny I'm thing catabolic the, the research is so clear and this research is God it's older than I am I mean it's seventy eight years old that when you do stop uh, okay when you do stop boom you come right back so much faster if you stop again you'll come back even faster if you stop again you'll even come back faster. So there is the great value in not training is that you can regain those, uh, uh, regain those gains so quickly. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff that can be said about this. The, the one thing I'll say just from a psychological standpoint is it really helps if you have something else in your life that you could, this is going to be a wrong way to phrase it, but be addicted to aside from exercise, right? Have some other hobbies, right? Something to keep your mind focused and, and engaged. So when you're, you're, you know, you're taking off a training, like that's not the only thing you're thinking about, because if you keep rushing back into it, you're going to sabotage the recovery process and the benefits of taking time off, which are very significant. Even if you feel like you're losing everything, you're not, you're, you're definitely not. In fact, this is going to facilitate uh, better, you know, longer term progress. If you're intelligent about your you know, your, your time off and your deloads and stuff like that. So just, just have, I don't know if you like cats, you know, pet cats or something like that, have something that you're into. Yeah. To, um, well, it goes back to our conversation about diet to me, Patrick. I mean, you know, we, we, we both have said so many times the tradition is first the fast, then the feast. And I, I, I think you need, I think you need 
and here we're in the middle of Lent here and uh, towards the end, but you know, this uh, we're in, it's funny because Ramadan and Lent are both happening at the same time, you know, that, that because it's uh, Ramadan is lunar, you know, so much of the world right now is in a, a mode of fasting. Fasting, indeed. And one of the things that people, I, I, I always think it, it's nice, actually, the, uh, I like our question here because it's kind of the opposite. If I think most of us who listen and comment here think of weightlifting as a, or lifting or training as kind of a gift, as a feast. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 there's no question that you have to take time off. There's no question you have to deload. You, you can't just keep getting better and better and better. Yeah. So wait a sec. What, what what do I do when I can't train? Well, not train. And I know. I train. Train. Learn the violin. Something. Yeah. Right. Good. That's good. Well, right. Seriously, like I'm, I'm totally serious. Like have something else in your life. Right. If you don't have something else in your life aside from lifting, there's a general structural issue here that is you know beyond the scope of this conversation. Yeah. We, yeah. We really need that. You really need something else to keep you occupied and to challenge you and to work on as your body recovers from the physical stress. Plus, there's man. And Dan, I know you've experienced this in many areas of your life. Like sometimes you just grind and grind and gr there's something about the necessity of taking a break from something after a long grind that allows you to recover and come back anew and with a fresh perspective. This is true, not obviously for lifting, but it's true for writing. It's true for like you can grind a music, you can grind at something for months and you just, you just, you just, you get stuck at a certain point. And what you really need to do is just give a little breathing room take a little break you come back and then you, you you're, you're refreshed you have a new perspective and that's where the breakthroughs really happen so this is again this is sort of a, a structural thing it's not just true uh for lifting but you need this sort of cyclicality where you do work very hard at something really hard and you do need to take some some time off and you know go i don't know do something else for a little while and then and then you come back to it and you're better and stronger and yeah, uh, it is solved by walking. You know, Saint Augustine. Here's another, I, my example. I was thinking of uh, Patrick is jigsaw puzzles. If I, I I like jigsaw puzzles in the winter, I find them uh, very. Uh, you know, you can. My with, wife loves with, puzzles. Yeah. Yeah, with a, with another person, other people, but if you walk away from the board for a day and come back, you look down and go, Ugh. and you'll your brain had had been at some low. Either it's the either you clicked refresh or you you know i don't know remember you yeah, your subconscious was still working on it that's the thing yeah, right? it, yeah. remember how we used to say you just the, the key to all questions on the computer was turn it off and re, you know restart it was always, yeah did you turn it off everything oh. works better after you unplug it for a little while that's yeah great. and so yeah so just just remind yourself you ju you're just turning the computer off it'll be better when you come back yeah see so like the old nintendo you know smack it blow in the card and plug it <laughs> Apparently that's bad. Apparently you're not supposed to do that. So the, the, nerd, well, the nerds told me, but you know what? It always works. So I'm going to keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. All right. Ne next question. Gary says, Hey Pat, I mistyped last week. How dare you? And asked how you would include chin-ups in armor building, but he meant the Prometheus protocol, uh, which is one of my programs. He's in the second week of it. Look, my, my advice for chin-ups is pretty much the same, no matter what program you're doing two days a week, one heavy day, add weight, do your ladders, just get the intensity up and another day of just volume and practice of body weight and, you know, make your last set to failure. That's it. You have one heavy day. You have one, if you can already do some, if you can't do one shit, that's different. But if you can already do some, you got a decent base one day focused on intensity, add, you know, put the belt on strap, put the kettlebell on the belt, whatever, you know what I mean? And another day where you just do a couple sets, body weight, get the reps up, get a lot of volume in done. That's it. They just apply that to anything you want. Dan, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that. or. Yeah, I will say this. In my new upcoming book, I have a whole chapter on why I'm not going to prescribe uh, pull-ups, chin-ups anymore. Because you, you're the second you put it in a program, you're always answering questions about the pull-up. <laughs> it just invites too many questions. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, it's a great exercise, and I'm a whole, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a terrible human person. But I just, you know, I went back to the Bosco books. Uh, I, I, I organized my, uh, my... You're right, though. It does invite so many... That's why I had to qualify. Like if, you, if you can already do a handful of pull-ups, which is a pretty big assumption. That's not a yeah. lot of people. But if you can already do that, simplest approach in the world, two days a week, heavy, the other day, 
just volume, get your reps in. Done. And that should that should not give you uh sad elbow, right? <laughs> if you do a lot more than that, you might risk sad <laughs> elbow. We don't want sad elbow. We've talked about that. If you can't do a handful of reps, then things are a lot more complicated to the point that uh, <laughs> I don't really want to write. I really don't want to have to deal with that either. But uh and 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 honestly, it's not like I'm against pull-ups. I just get to the point where it's like <sighs> You know, you can only answer so many questions about one exercise of of a, of a workout, right? And it's just clear to me that so so in my in my hypertrophy training, I've dropped pull ups, and I I think, and of course, the big question is, well, what are you gonna do for the the, the pull? It's like, well, um, I don't I don't believe well, yeah, I don't know. I'm fully my arms because it, the question just made a, made bad memories come. And, and the hurtful, hurtful <laughs> sad memories. Traumatized. Injury. I'm not yeah. talking more about it. I need, I need a hug. People seem to forget you can grow a kettlebell, right? That is something you can do. Uh, and it works, it works well. All right. Um, well, let's keep going here. So thank you. It was a good question, Gary. I do appreciate it. Right. All right. Uh, Abhai says, Pat, on one of your programs says two sets of five reps and single and press. Is that two left, two right? No, it's just five reps on your right. One, two, three, four, five. Five reps on your left. And then you do that again. And that's two sets of five reps on the single arm press. It's not a ladder if I write it like that. All right. Stewart says, hello to both. I have a question, please. Perform correctly. What is the best deadlift with kettlebell stand? Sumo, suitcase style, traditional, you know, staggered stand, stand. How did it, do you even work the deadlift with the kettlebell much? And uh, what are your thoughts on more, this? I mean, it's in the cert, but, you know, by the time I troubleshoot, the problems with the kettlebell deadlift, you know, we've already gone over the, the time given. Uh, the kettlebell's too low for most people. Um, on the list, if I was had to pick one of them, um, of course, you know, my hinge variations, uh, Stuart, uh, we have the one where you hold the bell behind your back. So you two hands behind your back. We call it the, I call it the RDL stretch. Yep. But you just stick your chin forward and you do the hinge. That's a variation that you don't have. Uh, you mentioned the suitcase uh, deadlifts. Those are fine, but you, you're going to hit a spot where the bell is still a long ways from hitting a target like the floor. Mm -hmm. To get there, you're going to have to start doing something like that. And, I, and so that would be – so on the list, uh, for most people I know, you have to put – to make the deadlift work, you have to put it on a box because most people I work with are – you know, either my height or taller. Yep. Um, and well, I like what you say there, Dan. I actually just filmed a video on this for my oh. kettlebell quickies channel. And I said, Hey, if you're working deadlifts at the kettlebell, you don't have to start from the ground. You start from the top, similar to what you're saying, right? Cause you can get into that and you don't have to put the kettlebell on the ground. Amazingly enough, that is not, that is yeah. not something that you have to do because of what Dan's saying. A lot of times just to get the kettlebell all the way to the ground is going to distort the mechanics of the exercise. So just start it from the top. Push your hips, hips back, get into that deep hinge, whether you hold the kettlebell in front or behind, like Dan was talking about, which is an awesome just stretch in its own. That that for a lot of people is is really kind of the, the way to go, especially if you don't have a box or something like that. So that's a, kind of a small, easily missed point you're making there, Dan, but I want to emphasize it because it's uh, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. And we're getting a lot of good mornings. Good And, and Gary, uh, the, the memories, I'll get to over them somehow, okay? Uh, he he mentioned that these uh, this brought up trauma. And, uh, yes, and I and I need I need I do need a hug after after the uh, all the yeah it's fun it, but let's yeah. give Dan some virtual hugs by I don't know, sending in <laughs> but, uh, gentle listeners just know that sometimes we, donation monetary donation yeah sometimes money I, equals hugs I, I don't think people realize how often I answer the same questions and when it comes to I can't do a pull up but you have pull ups in a workout. You can only answer that question 20, 35,000 times. There's a 35,000 limit. There is. Yeah. But, and you're just like, okay, I'm just pulling them out. And I honestly can't figure out how. I mean, I remember when I was first to these magazines up there called Strength and Health. I would read these articles. And uh, and I, even with my home gym, I would realize that I had my Sears, you know, 110 pound set, 50 kilo. And I would look at the workouts and I would, even as a 13, 14 year old, I would adjust, I would adjust for what I had, you know, or my dad yelled at me one time because I was doing pull-ups that we had these ex 
pieces of wood extensions off our, uh, we call it the patio. And I would jump up and do pull-ups. And he said, it was okay when you were smaller. You can't do it anymore. You're getting too big. And I thought, <laughs> that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Sears. Is Sears still around? Do they still exist? Uh, uh, the, the last one I can remember here in Salt Lake uh, is now, uh, they, they put up a parking lot. Yeah. So I, don't <laughs> I mean, uh, what about Boscovs? Anybody remember Boscovs? No? Not ringing yep. any bells. If uh -huh. you remember Boscovs, drop it. There's a store my grandmother always used to drag me to when I was a kid in the mall. What, yeah. was, what was Bosco? What the heck was Boscovs? I don't know. Somebody will somebody will answer it. I, I count on you guys. All right, moving on. JBJ says, I'm using Easy Strength for Fat Loss to lose 40 pounds. It's working, but I can't help thinking a substantial amount of my weight loss is muscle. How much muscle should you expect? uh to lose when losing weight well a couple of people in my inner circle have done dexa scans um i, I don't want to mention names but one one said that they had lost uh uh persons down down to 19 a female down to 19 percent and with no muscle loss on dexa scans uh i've heard another person told me they lost 14 pounds uh, of which it was like, and, and I, and I'm sorry if I don't get it right, but if it's, it was like, it was like sneaking up on two pounds of muscle mass and 12 pounds of fat. Uh, I would, if you lose more than a pound or two, I would be concerned about what you're doing. Um, you, the, the, in easy strength for fat loss, you should be eating a lot of protein you should be lifting weights. And if you lift weights and eat protein, you should build or maintain uh, muscle mass. Um, the body fat, which you literally breathe out, by the way, which is the strangest thing. It's the biochemicals, uh, the, 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 bi the biology and the biochemistry is that you, you breathe it out, which I find fascinating. Um, it, it, it would be what you're doing in the ES for easy strength for fat loss is you're setting yourself up to be uh an efficient um free up fat free fatty acids and then you know deal with it and then you eat the protein you drink the water eat the vegetables uh so if you lose a lot of muscle mass then you, there's something you're there's a mistake happening yeah there, there there's and it would be interesting to, to get more information uh put that up on uh, if you if you have if you're on the my forum uh jbj uh, put that question up and and be more specific because I'd like you to I'd like to know why you're worried about the muscle mass is there is it something you're seeing or you know you know what I'm saying okay yeah yeah so if you're dieting down in general you know it's first off it's 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 all about mitigation you're going to lose some muscle no matter what so you can stop you know there's no unicorn island here where you're just going to lose pure body fat right so it's how do I mitigate against <laughs> muscle loss and there's really, you know, three things. Resistance strain, that's the biggest one. Easy strength is doing that, right? Protein intake is another one. And, you know, kind of controlling the aggression of your general deficit. If you're like going crazy with your calorie deficit, yeah, you're going to waste away a lot more and a lot more uh, quickly. So making sure you have, a, a, well, it's really, it's really trade-offs. It really just depends, right? How quickly you want to lose that weight and how much you're, you're, you're willing to to give in terms of uh, muscle to get there. Some people might be willing to give more, but you know, other people might want to, you know, work on, you know, maybe going a little bit less aggressive with the overall deficit to retain more muscle. So it's kind of a, a preference thing there, I suppose, but those are really the three things to keep in mind. Right. And, and uh, when I first came online, uh, this book called lights out had come out. It was, so it's 1998 or so. And uh, Tiffany was on the road all the time. And so, and my daughters were, so 98, my daughters would have been, what, eight and six. And so they had, her, you know, they would go to bed early, uh, which was wonderful. And I tried to do that experiment uh, where you try to sleep. The The plan was to drink at uh, sleep, <laughs> drink. The plan was to sleep 12 hours a night. Now, I didn't always get 12, but I tried really hard to do it. Um, and uh, I ate no carbs. So zero carbs, wow. massive amounts of sleep. And I went from 226 to 213 uh, in a week. And I would say that I didn't lose. That would be one of the few times I did. I don't think I lost. I, I mean, when Tiff came home, she said it 
what the hell did you do? I mean, you, it was such a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you're going to, if you're losing muscle mass, then let's just kind of, let's just walk backwards, sleep, protein, resistance training. If you've checking those boxes and you're still, and you're losing, you know, 40 pounds and half muscle mass, you, you might want to get medical intervention if you're getting the sleep and the protein and the lifting in. Because there's some, it seems like some, you, something's getting, something's off here. All right, let us continue on. A lot of good questions today. Uh, by the way, people are pointing out daylight savings time threw them off with the uh, podcast. That's right. It, man, don't get me started on that with uh, five children. The move in the clock. Ugh. And you real know, pain, real pain, real pain. It's funny because I remember during the Nixon administration, the Nixon administration, we were going to change from this met to move to uh, the, the the metric system in everything in America. We were going to move from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. That was a little bit different, and we were going to dump daylight savings time. I was in the eighth grade when these conversations were going on. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and we're still. I, I hear. I hear a promise like every year. Oh, it's going to end. It's going to. We're going to yeah, stop doing this to your poor here. parents. Congress won't pass it. Of course, with this Congress, they would. If we pass, if I went to Congress and said, "Let's pass a bill," the first president of the United States was George Washington. It would not get support. It would get stuck in committee. Yeah. Yeah. Do something. We, can, we can wish and we can wish and, and hope. Walt says, what are some good exercises to do in the Tabata style? Dan, are you using the, the old Tabata in your programming these days at all? Or There's two exercises that work. The front Let's remind people of what the Tabata approach yeah. is for people who. You know, of all the regrets I have as an author, I would say writing that article would be in that top area. Which one is yours? Is the you have, remind me, you have an article I on it? Yeah, I'm the one. It's called Tabata Front Squats or something like that. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, my third article for Teen Nation. So this takes us back to. Uh, I see it on DaveDraper.com as well. I'll just pull it up. Tabata. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, repost of it. So I read the Tabata Protocol uh, on uh, Clarence Bass's site. Clarence Bass. My God. What a legend. I've been getting a lot of questions from about Clarence. By the way, I found the original article. It's called the Tabata Method, and it's from Dan John, elite coach. You have the elite coach status on, so this, on it, this Tickle Nation. I learned this from him. By the way, I've talked about his books so much. He sent me all of his editions. So I bought all of his books. Then he sent me all of his books, and they're all signed, which, you know, thank Very you. Very nice. Very nice. So it was this idea of this, and he was, and I, I looked at it, and I looked at my life at the time, two stories from 98. And I thought, well, you know what? And I went down in my weight room at the time, which later became Kelly's bedroom. And uh, and I tried to do Tabata military presses. So I put on, you know, I so overreach i put on like 115 pounds and i did as many reps as i could in 20 seconds i got through three rounds and uh so it's 20 seconds of exercise 10 seconds true rest 20 seconds 10 seconds and it's got to be a hard 10 seconds 20 on 20 off uh, 20 on 10 off for uh it it's not exactly four minutes it turns out it's more like 350 but let's not worry about it and then I then I said that well that was interesting because I couldn't raise my arms after the third or fourth round, and then I experimented with front squats and that's and that helped me for these local meets. I then tried thrusters and it worked a while, and then I realized that I can do thruster, but nobody else I worked with could do them safely because uh, they didn't have the press power. And then so the only exercises that work with Tabatas, in my opinion, are barbell front squats and uh, goblet squats and the goblet squat uh, Tabata uh, you, you know it is it is illuminated what helped me folks is back then as an Olympic lifter especially in our local meets I used to always have to follow myself so once we get over 300 uh, 140 kilos I would often be the only lifter you know because you know that's just the way it works out sometimes in these local meets so I would have to I would do my first clean and jerk and then, you know, two minutes later, my second, two minutes later, my third. And I was really struggling. And the Tabata front squat twice a month 
was the thing that allowed me to get that specific conditioning to allow me to, to do it. I also found that it weirdly helped the little Danny John with his front squat recoveries. It, it really helped me uh, standing up, standing up with the clean. Okay. Mm. Your mileage may vary. Uh, the article in the teen nation really got into this whole fat loss thing. It does work for fat loss, but it's too high intensity for most mm. people. Mm -hmm. About twice a month if you're going to try it. And the thing is, don't forget, she's no longer with us, but the first time I did the workout, I stumbled down. We used to have this driveway that was on a hill, and I was laying in front of the fire hydrant on the ground. And I remember coming, I mean, literally coming to and seeing my little puppy, Lexi. She was in that seated dog position where they're looking at you like, please don't die. Please <laughs> don't die. I don't care about you. I care about my dinner. Uh, and uh, that's when I realized that not a lot of people are going to do it. It was just, it's, it's like one of those things I'm reading. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I one, ain't ever gonna... one high IQ person famously said, well, if it's so good, why don't you do it every day? And I thought, I don't know how much could you imagine a 28 Tabata front squat challenge done I mean, so it's got to be 14 reps in round one, eight in round eight. <laughs> you do that for 28 straight days. I think things would just start popping off, man. I just, yeah, yeah. The uh -huh. start popping off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. It's uh, okay. Fun question. Uh, let's move on to another one. Uh, Stuart has to add from a lower back wrist perspective versus muscle gain. I don't know if that's a question or a comment. It doesn't seem like a complete thought. So Stuart, if you want to you know, clarify, we'll be happy to pull that up again. Uh, let's see here. Justin just has a comment. He says, I've, I've always had the huge advantage of being very large. I'm middlingly strong naturally, but I've always been able to pick up and carry a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, we all have our strengths. It's totally fine to, to play those. Oh, also so. let, Justin also let us know that Sears and Boscoves are still around. Boscoves? Where can I get to a Boscoves? These you know, days? interesting. And I just it's just a thought. But, you know, just not that long ago, the power of Sears, uh, the Sears Roebuck catalog here in Salt Lake City, there are homes, many of them, called bungalows. And where you got the equip the design and all the parts were from Sears and Sears would deliver a home and you would, and with instructions on how to build it. And they were called bungalows. Uh, my first barbell was at Sears. Uh, you know, uh, you could buy rifles at Sears and weightlifting equipment and you had everything and how the mighty have fallen. Right, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just funny how, and it's, it's, you know, I try to stay current. The problem with staying current and weightlifting is you always go back to 19, the 1950s, uh, but it's just fascinating how my my own personal business model, if you'd have sat me down and what when I first started coaching and say, yeah, the bulk of your coaching will be answering questions on a computer, I'd be like, wow. Uh, so real quick, nobody's going to care about the story on town. Anyways, we, once we were driving back to Florida, we found a mall, an actual mall. Remember these things, Dan? We have a mall. Met. Uh, and it was actually populated and there were stores and it was like vibrant and like took it right back to like 1997. And we took the kids there like, kids, this is a world you have never known. Right. And they loved it. And they're like, oh man, they were like, they literally said like the old way of shopping was way better <laughs> than this point and click on a computer. It was very nostalgic, very, but they had a carousel in yeah. the mall, you know, <laughs> it was like, I've just, it was in Kentucky somewhere. Right. And it was just a uh, very funny, man. Just the. A trip oh, back in time, yeah. Well, you go to the Tan Fran Mall or Ceremony Mall growing up, and uh, yeah, that's where that was. I mean, that was uh, what are these love connection play? That was where the love connections were made. That's where you, yeah. you know, it you all went down from Mercy School. Ooh, yeah, I mean, we still have a mall, you know, down yeah. the street, but it's it's dead. It's just nothing there, right? Yeah. There's nobody there. It's just like, why is this even still? Why haven't they demolished this thing, right? Um, very sad, very sad, very sad. A little inconvenience. Uh, it does a does a person good, you know, to get out and be among other people. But anyway, we'll talk about that another day. All right. 
Let's see here. Uh, all right. Ria Chona says, hey, I'm finally cleared by the ortho to resume training. I've been thinking of using easy strength as a back to training protocol. What do you think? Easy strength, a good way to swing back into things. Yeah. I mean, pick, pick five movements that stay away from an injury, but support it, you know, uh, you know, uh, I know what I'm trying to say. Uh, you pick, pick movements that don't incur any trauma to the injured site. And, uh, uh, you know, so, I mean, obviously, you know, don't, don't do max deadlifts. If you have a, you know, a lower back injury, find a, a hinge that's, you know, family friendly for you. Uh, yeah, sure. Every, um, when coming back from injuries, I usually, especially with, you know, I mean, this is just a track coach talking, but I always try to get my athletes to, uh, you know, we, we tend to avoid excessive rotation on the injured area the joint, if it's a joint, and we try to keep the, the ballistic, the explosion to a minimum until you've really kind of knitted around the, the, the issues. Um, I'm, I'm always amazed that we don't have more injuries with my throwing crew, but uh, when we do, we, we, we're, uh, we work around it. That's, there you go. There's coaching 101. Bad things happen, work around it. it it's good. I mean, we have the best... The weather is perfect for track and field right now because we don't have a track meet today. Uh, but you know, well, my, we throw in snow, we throw in rainstorms. We, we, you know, my athlete probably lost the nationals because of a lightning delay last year. You always have to work. You just have to keep constantly getting around things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, let's uh, hit Anthony's. This is more of a comment, but he says rowing a kettlebell doesn't just doesn't hit like a proper pull up. Well, look, they're, they're different exercises. If you're going to row a kettlebell, let me offer a few suggestions. One, if to hit the right intensity, you should go, I think, for a single arm supported row. The, the limiting factor with rows is if you're just trying to row from a hinge, you're just not going to be able to go that heavy. So, you know, usually you think double rows or double kettlebell exercises are the, the heavier, more intense, but not with rows. No, yeah, you, you should you should brace. You should support and you should do that heavy single arm row, row to your hip, hold the top. Oh, and, and really, really control the exercise and that done right. That will light you up. Of course, it's not a pull up. It's a horizontal pull, not a, not a vertical one, but it is a very good exercise when it's done properly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good. Um, We got the thumbs up from Dan, so I'm satisfied with that. Whether anybody else is satisfied, who knows? Yeah. All right, uh, we're, I, I just got to stay on this Boskovs thing for a minute because Jordan says it's still kicking in PA. Jordan, I have to ask as somebody who is a, is was that is my blood, right? I'm from I'm from Delco. Uh, as, as my wife says, you can take the boy out of Delco, but you can't take the Delco out of the boy. Is it the Granite Run Mall? Is Boskov still there? If you're in that area, you have to confirm and, and, and let me know. Because <laughs> if so, I'm going to send you on a fact-finding mission here soon, my friend. Boskov. I don't know. That's the last I'm going to say about Boskov's on this episode. We can revisit it. <laughs> this is like this is the store that my grandmother used to, you know, when I was young, just like, drag me to. Oh, I'd, I was just being there for hours, just begging to get out of Boskov's. What in the hell could we possibly get at Boskov's? For yeah. hours and hours on end, was just drug through that well, store. What's fun is that he mentioned that his first barbell was from Sears, and yeah. and this is the booklet. Oh, those orange highlights are pe parts I've retyped. Um, but you know, it's fun. I'll look at this. And by the way, folks, there are no pull ups in this program, but there are clean and presses. There are curls. There's more presses. There's shrugs. There's well, those are uh, sit ups, leg raises, uh, what he calls a snatch, press behind the neck. Uh, it's just one. Oh, and and dumbbell squats because at the time and deadlifts because at the time nobody squatted uh, the way we squat now. But it's funny you know, when you mention something like Sears, and it was and it, the same with Justin. It was a uh, it was a life. Life changer for me. Yeah. Hey, I guess if I could say one more thing is, you know, we haven't had a sponsorship for this podcast for a while, and I feel like we've just given Boskovs a lot of, yeah, a lot of, you know, promotion here. So if they have any budget left whatsoever, and they want to finally catch up with the times and try the online advertising, Dan and I are very susceptible to bribes. We will happily plug Boskovs in, in future episodes. Right? Yeah, for in, in total candor, uh, young uh, gentle listeners. Um, 
uh, I've, I don't believe I've yet sold out, but if the price is high enough, I will. That's right. Uh, it just needs to be a certain why, number of euros, right? Pat Flynn's original protein shake. Mm, Principled to a point. That's and all we've ever claimed. Right? The moment I started drinking Pat just... Flynn's protein, I instantly gained 14 pounds of lean body mass <laughs> and got better lucky. Principled to a price is what I should say. All right, let's, uh, let's keep, while we're still principled, let's answer a few other questions here. Yes. Uh, there was a, there's a good one here. I, now I skipped past it. Where yeah, did that go? To sell out, folks. I, just get the number up there. Yeah, let's I'm get it up. Sell out. Yeah, I, I love it when people ask me to sell out for an affiliate code. Boy, I'm not going yeah, to. Come on. Man. I, for me to get $2, I mean, no, I, give me give me more than an I know I might not have that much integrity, but it's more than an affiliate code, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. all, right, all right. So Justin says this. This is this is the old bro, the old bro measurement. He says, if amateur opinion, he says, if your poles and hinges aren't getting genuinely weaker, you probably aren't losing actual muscle. So the idea, the bro wisdom is this: Hey, are you losing weight, but are your pull ups the same or even going up? Then you're probably okay in the muscle department. Are you losing weight and are your pull ups going like way down? Then you might be losing more muscle. Let's let's maybe pull-ups isn't the best example. And I'd only say that because you do get better at pull-ups when you lose weight. I, my famous story about coming back from the Middle East and the PE teacher asked me to, for the female, uh, the, she asked me to show the female class how to do dips. And I did, and I knocked out 35. And I'm like, well, I just lost 40 pounds to a liver parasite. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that 40 pound loss was a lot. It was like, a, yeah. So, but you know, if, if your press the I, external resistance moves. Yeah, the, the press is the one. The press and the deadlift, you know, the, the poles, uh, the, any any kind of Olympic lifting, uh, uh, squat, yeah, bench. But if those lifts are staying, yeah, I, I you're, you're probably not. Um, and sometimes I got to tell you, if some sometimes if you lose some body mass, you like some lifts it's better to be massive in the squat. You know, you can, you can, it's funny. I just read a good book uh, by his, the author's name, Jimmy chaos. And uh, he talks about the, how do, I get, how do I get a name like that? Yeah. He has this massive, he was talking about this lifter had a massive belly and could use that off of his, off of his thighs on massive squats. So there is an, there's actually an advantage to being overweight in some of our, in our family of lifts. But for most of us, we, we yeah. those press numbers, I like your point here. Uh, was it, uh, Justin? I like your point. Hinge, the row pulls, but the, the pull-ups, yeah. So I, you're, you're, you're right, but I just wanted to asterisk it. I'm sorry. And I'm, and I'm wobbling on. And I'm nah, it's all, it's all good. So before, before we wrap this one up, Dan, what else are you working on? How's the book coming along, all that good stuff? Well, books, um, fr from my end, I'm done. But, you know, now it's that whole other, <laughs> layer of stuff uh that has to happen uh things are good uh i'll be heading out uh gosh in a uh I, I have a lecture next week up at a university which i'm kind of excited about uh, they've asked me to come in and speak Delightful. which always makes me wonder about how unqualified schools must be to bring in a <laughs> yeah. like me uh and then the week after my brother gary's son is getting married i'll be off to oh, california lovely and then Just lovely uh, and then not long uh, not long from now, I will be uh, heading out to England. Uh, I will miss uh, one, two sessions with you, okay? Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll plan for, plan for a season of depression. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but I will do the Tuesday before I fly it on the Wednesday. Uh, yeah, so I, I've got a lot going on. I'm doing those two weeks. Uh, I'm doing a workshop in England with... Uh, uh, at, over at James St. Pierre's place in Essex with Tim Anderson. And then we're going to Odensee with uh, my friend Oli. And Oli's going to, uh, and Tim and I. And so uh, down there in Odensee, Denmark, uh, home of Hans Christian Anderson. I'm always amazed when I talk to people uh, about Hans Christian Anderson because they only know like the Little Mermaid, which isn't an accurate description, <laughs> but uh, Matchstick Girl uh, and my favorite, The Emperor's New Clothes, which I use all the time when I talk about when I, for those who don't know the emperor's new clothes, if you ever get a chance, folks, uh, go to a cert and, or a, a workshop and meet the guy who calls himself big guns 55 or whatever it is. 
and you meet them and the first thing comes out of your brain, do you even lift, bro? <laughs> uh, whenever I get shot down online, I always, I, I, I should do what, uh, oh, a silent Bob and uh, the other guy uh, did. Is he, Jay. Is, uh, yeah, Jay and Jay. Silent. Is you, you you drive over to somebody's house who said negative things, and then you beat the living hell out of them. In their, in their, <laughs> yeah. Because of the uh, Emperor's New Groove. Now, there's a good film. All right. Well, that's awesome, Dan. Uh, be sure, everybody, to check out Dan John University. Be sure to check out Kettlebell Quickies. And be sure to head over to BossCobs.com. We'll see you guys on the next episode next week. Dan, thank you, as always. You bet. Take care. Always good to talk to you.